Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, is not only one of the most well-known Avengers, but also one of the most well-known characters in the multiverse of Marvel Comics. Long before he became the ironclad defender of justice, however, there were many events even as a child that led Tony to the path of being one of Earth's greatest heroes. Tony's biological parents, Jude and Amanda Armstrong, were two agents that worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. The two met on a mission and fell in love with each other after Jude saved Amanda from an assassin. After a two-year relationship, Amanda became pregnant with Tony. About a week before the birth of Tony, Jude's secret allegiance to S.H.I.E.L.D.'s rival organization Hydra was discovered. Amanda and Jude had a dispute with the outcome of Amanda taking Jude's life. Traumatized by what had taken place with her husband, she went to Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., in hopes of giving her future son a safer life. After being born, Tony was placed in an orphanage in Bulgaria. One of Fury's associates and well-known industrialist Howard Stark learned of this, and he decided to adopt the baby and keep the name that Amanda had given him. Howard and his wife, Maria, decided to secretly raise Tony as their own child leaving Tony to believe that he was their biological son. Tony grew up not knowing that he was an adopted child. However, he was loved by Maria unconditionally. Unfortunately, Tony did not have the best relationship with Howard. Tony, by nature, was sensitive and reclusive, which clashed with Howard's outgoing and cocky personality. Howard also had an ever-increasing drinking habit that at times would cause him to verbally abuse Tony. This was detrimental to the development of young Tony, and as a coping mechanism, he began to turn to electronics even at the young age of five. In his mind, he felt that tangible things such as hardware were reliable and predictable. People, on the other hand, were unpredictable and hard to understand. Howard and Maria had busy lifestyles that often left the family butler, Edwin Jarvis, to watch over Tony. Being alone most of the time, he began to read many books. One story in particular that caught his attention was the tale of King Arthur and the Knights at the Round Table. In the story, he was mesmerized by the knights in shining armor. Along with his interest in engineering, he fantasized about the idea of creating a literal man of iron. He then built a model of his Iron Man with an erector set and drew the first concept of an Iron Man suit. At the age of seven, Howard sent Tony to boarding school to help toughen him up. While at the private school, he was bullied by his peers and teachers because they saw him as being too childish. The only way to escape from everything was to continue to enjoy the stories about King Arthur. When he reached the age of 15, he joined an undergraduate program at MIT. There, he was a valedictorian with double majors in physics and engineering. A few years later, Tony met Meredith McCall, who was his first love. She was the daughter of Howard's greatest business rival. Due to the nature of their parents being rivals, in the business world, they were forbidden to see each other. Their love didn't develop beyond that of a summer love. Meredith was eventually sent to live with her relatives, and Tony was sent to Europe to further his education and to separate the two. To numb the pain of losing his first love, Tony began to experiment with alcohol and found another girl named Naomi. To impress Naomi, he took her racing on his motorcycle. Later that night, Tony crashed in an accident. Luckily, he walked away with only a broken arm and minor injuries. During his time at school, one of his professors named Ted Slott taught him that he should keep an open mind to his scientific pursuits and always be open to new ideas. School soon began to be too easy for Tony, and he gravitated towards more thrilling things in search of an adrenaline rush. He began to search for that feeling in driving fast cars, skydiving, skiing, and women. After each new challenge he conquered, he turned to drinking to find solace. Then, Tony's life was further complicated when his parents, Howard and Maria, died in a car crash unexpectedly when Tony was 21. At still a young age, the burden of running Stark Industries was now on his shoulders. However, being a visionary man, he took the business from being solely a munitions firm to a multinational corporation in just a few years. Stark Industries became a leader of cutting-edge electronics and scientific industries. Life as a CEO provided him with new challenges that attributed to his growth, but as the company got bigger and his job became less exciting for him, he fell into the same cycle of self-indulgence once again. He would go on to find his purpose in life after a near-death experience when overseeing a military demonstration in Sien Kong. There he tripped a booby trap that lodged shrapnel in his chest. While injured, he was taken captive by a terrorist leader known as Wang Chu. Wong gave Tony a week to make him a powerful weapon, and if completed, he would give him a life-saving surgery. He knew, however, that the tyrant was only telling him what he wanted to hear, so he accepted his offer to gain access to tools. In the small laboratory, he designed and built an electrically-powered suit of armor with a device that enabled his heart to continue beating. 
the armor was also well equipped with heavy weaponry. Tony's fascinations as a kid of a man of iron had now begun to come full circle. Thanks so much for watching this video. We really appreciate the support on our videos here at Hero History. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like or a comment on the video and subscribe for more like it. Thanks again, and as always, have a marvelous day.